Hey everybody, welcome back. We're on Monopoly still. We've got part three now, okay? We're gonna look at a Monopoly making profits. And we're gonna have a little addendum at the end of this video about, state, uh, about evaluating whether or not we're productively efficient or allocatively efficient. But that'll be at the end, so I'm gonna put that over there. So back to Monopoly, okay? Part three, we've kind of drawn this graph once, but now we're gonna draw it and add an additional curve because we need to show making profits. So what have we learned so far? Well, the market and the firm are one and the same. So the market demand curve is the firm's demand curve. So we draw a market demand curve. All market demand curves are downward sloping, okay? So feel very confident about drawing that. And since we've got market power, we know that the MR curve splits away, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the MR curve splitting away from the demand curve at twice the slope in absolute terms. Big thing to keep in mind, right? You get that split, you're halfway there to getting this thing right. Now I'm gonna add in the marginal cost curve. Once again, just focusing on the upward sloping portion of the marginal cost curve. So I put that in and I can pause once I get the big three curves on there, MR, demand, and MC, and I can find the output level. Why? Because I know where MR and MC intersect. We're gonna produce all of these goods right up to this amount. Produce all those. Why are we producing all those? MR exceeds MC for all those goods. Put my Q profit max. Now, the price. Remember, how do we find the price? Price is based on the demand curve. So, the monopolist is going to charge a price based on the demand curve, okay? Boom, 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 boom. Price monopolist. Why is that the right price? Well, at this price, this horizontal distance is the quantity demanded, and guess what? That equals the quantity supplied, because what's the quantity supply gonna be? It's gonna be the quantity that gives us profit max. And now, we have to add our fourth curve. What curve do we have to add? ATC. Why do we have to add ATC? Because we need to show profits. Once again, if you're ever asked to show profit or losses, you have to add the ATC curve in, okay? Average total cost curve. Where am I going to put it? Well, there's a ton of places I can put it. All I need to make sure of is that when ATC crosses this output threshold, okay, when we get to this level of output, I need ATC to be below price monopoly. Because what's price monopoly? The per unit revenue the monopolist gets. So I can literally go here, here. I mean, there's tons of places I can go with this. So I'm just gonna start right here. Gonna go down, 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 down until I hit the MC curve. That rule has not changed. Once I hit MC, ATC has to come up. There's my minimum ATC. However, that's not the point that's really important here. The point that is important on the ATC line is that one right there. This is our ATC at that level of output. Let me say that again. This vertical distance is our ATC at that level of output. So I grab that dot and I bring it over right there. ATC, average total cost, okay? Average total cost times quantity gives us total cost. So that box is total cost. Price times quantity, maybe a good way to say it is like this, price times quantity gives us total revenue. ATC times quantity gives us total cost. So what are the profits? I'm gonna use green for the profits here. The profits are this box right there. Hopefully I'm not blocking your view too much. That green box is the profits. So we've conquered our first task of this video, which this is to show a monopoly making profits. Took us four curves, MC, ATC, demand, and MR, and hopefully those are starting to make a lot of sense to us. But we've got a little addendum. We now want to talk about are we being productively efficient and are we being allocatively efficient? Well, when it comes to monopolists, this is not just the short run. It can also be the long run if we're talking about a pure monopolist, okay? There's no really short run graph and long run graph if you're talking about pure monopolists. Monopolists can make profits in the long run. Why? Because they have complete product differentiation. There's no close substitutes and the barriers to entry are infinite. Nobody can even come into this market even if they want to in concept, okay? And that's what we're doing is the concepts right now. So this graph right here is both the short run and it is the long run graph. And the question is, 
are we producing at minimum ATC? Because we need to be producing at minimum ATC to be productively efficient. Well, let's take a look at our graph. Minimum ATC is right there. Now, I didn't draw this graph beautifully um, at all, but if you looked really close, I'm not sure if you can, but if you can look really close, the ATC is actually slightly more than the minimum. And even if you can't see the graph, you know that ATC is downward sloping all the way till it hits the MC. That's the minimum ATC, and then it's upward sloping. So the intersection with MC has to be minimum ATC, and we don't have any other ATCs, okay, that are that low. There's no other ATC that's that low because that's the minimum. Hence, we are not producing at minimum ATC. We are not productively efficient. Now, little caveat on this. A caveat on this. Is it even possible for a monopolist ever to be um, productively efficient? The answer is actually yes, but it would be by the most random of chances. Okay, so the answer is yes, but by the most random of chances. Only if, and this, there's nothing in the market that's going to drive us here. Only if we drew the ATC line so it hit where MR and MC are intersecting right there. And I want to really emphasize, guys, there's nothing pulling us to being there, okay? It might be tempting to draw it that way. Maybe you will draw it that way sometimes, but it would only by, be by random chance. So productively efficient, I'm going to say no with a little asterisk. The asterisk only by, yes, maybe by random chance, but for the most part, you see a monopoly, they're not going to be productively efficient. Final question. Are they allocate, allocatively efficient? Are we going to achieve max social surplus? Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to have to assume no externalities. So assuming no externalities, what does that mean? The marginal cost curve is the marginal social cost curve. And the demand curve is based on the marginal private benefit curve, which is the marginal social benefit curve. So there's my mark, this curve right here, marginal social benefit. This curve, marginal social cost. They intersect right there. I draw it down right to there. And I'm just going to put a big fat arrow, quantity opt. So this is the quantity that we would produce if we wanted to get max social surplus. What's the takeaway? We, a, a monopolist left alone will never produce to there. Never. Why? Because MR breaks away at twice the slope. And if MR breaks away at twice the slope, we're never going to produce to QOPT. Can't. Not going to happen. There's no caveat on this one. This one is a big fat no. When we have monopoly power, market power, we're always going to get some dead weight loss. Okay? It's a market failure. Now, if the market power is really small, Maybe, maybe not the government should intervene, okay? There's reasons for the government not to intervene. If market power gets really, really big, there's the, the, the reasons for intervention get bigger, okay? Get more substantial. So, monopoly power, allocative efficient, no, never going to happen, not even by random chance. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.